All right, next order of business. We are going to be dealing with some strain energy. Strain energy. Okay. So, now, when you have a material, let's say we have some kind of rectangular slab of material. Correct? Um, there's two things going on when you apply a force on it, obviously. There's going to be, let's say we apply a force like this like this let's say okay first thing is gonna do is gonna elongate right obviously this whole course is about deformation so it's gonna elongate like this but since it's applied asymmetrically this side is gonna be a little longer than this side and it might deform something like that correct now when you go even deeper on it you're gonna see that there's actually these two things stress and strain okay and there's two types of stress and strain there's longitudinal stress and strain and there's also shear stress and strain so some symbols that you should get familiar with when we're talking about stress when we're talking about stress stress units has the same units as pressure so force per area or newtons per meter squared and longitudinal stress is denoted by sigma whereas shear stress is denoted by tau and longitudinal stress is always the direction perpendicular to the force I mean sorry it's always perpendicular to the elongation so in this case we would have a, a longitudinal stress going that way but shear stress is kind of like a rubbing effect like imagine you're rubbing your hands together right there would be a shear stress in the middle there because it's kind of like rubbing each other there. It's always parallel to the force. Parallel to the force. But shear stress is always perpendicular to the, well, not perpendicular to the force, but perpendicular to the, let's say, the cross section. So if we had a force that was going exactly like this in the middle here, our shear, our, our uh, longitudinal stress would always be perpendicular to this cross section okay whereas our shear stress when we apply some kind of like rubbing force would always be like this it would always be um it would always be parallel to this force now there's always there's also strain and strain is a little bit different strain is an exact is a is a measurement of deformation and it has units of deformation over length okay displacement over length usually written as a percentage or something like that and we have two types of strain as well we have longitudinal strain given as epsilon and we also have shear strain given as gamma okay so those are some of the basics and now we have there we can consider different materials so look at these two examples one and two here we have a linear elastic orthotropic material and in, in this type of material, I don't really know the, the advanced, I don't really know like the specifics about this type of material, but it has this kind of um, relationship between stress and strain. Now, in a regular material that you're used to, you have this, um, you usually have a stress strain curve where you have stress on the top and strain on the bottom. And sometimes it's linear, sometimes it's not. Here we see we have a linear relationship, right? Now, orthotropic material means that it's going to be, the, the strain is going to be a function of the stress and nothing more. But when we have an anisotropic material, the strain is going to be a function of the stress, the long, sorry, it's going to be a function of the longitudinal stress and the shear stress. You see that? Whereas in an orthotropic material, the strain is only going to be a function of the longitudinal. So longitudinal is a function of longitudinal, and shear is a function of shear in an orthotropic material. But in an anisotropic material, an means not, it's all messed up. We have the, the longitudinal is a function of longitudinal and shear. Shear is a function of shear and longitudinal so in a way this is kind of like linear 
and this is kind of like nonlinear. Even though it says linear here, that's how I kind of like to think of it. And isotropic just means it deforms differently in different directions. Okay, so what is strain energy? And furthermore, what is strain energy density? Well, whenever you elongate something, think about it like a spring. Let's say you press down a spring. And when you press this spring down, it stores this energy, right? This potential energy. And this potential energy is exactly this strain energy. Well, not exactly, but that's how, I, that's how you kind of should think of it. It's the energy stored in deformation. Okay, and there's an exact way to calculate this. So, there's this formula that says that the differential of the strain energy, which we call U naught, right there, is equal to, it's going to be three different terms. Okay, it's going to be three different terms. First of all, since we're dealing with two dimensions here, it's going to be equal to the longitudinal stress, sigma xx in the x direction times the differential of the longitudinal strain, okay, epsilon xx. So longitudinal stress times the differential of longitudinal strain. And we're going to add to this the same thing, sigma yy now in the y direction times the differential of epsilon yy. And then lastly, we are going to add the longitudinal First, we're gonna long. I mean, sorry. First, we're gonna add the um, the shear, the longitudinal. Sorry, the shear. Um, what does it mean? Shear, shear. Uh, Jesus, I'm mixing everything up. Shear stress, which is tau x y, times the differential of the shear strain. Is 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 kind of confusing all these different symbols. But what you should memorize is it's always going to be stress and then differential of strain. Stress, differential of strain. And then stress and differential of strain. Okay? This is important. Stress, differential of strain. Stress, differential of strain. Stress, differential of strain. And always they're going to go together. So xx goes with xx, yy goes with yy, and xy goes with xy. Okay? And then we just have to compute this. So I'll just do uh, the first one for you. You can do the second one for yourself. But this is fairly simple. We just need to calculate these differentials. Let me go back to black. Um, OK, so first thing, d, the differential of epsilon xx. And what is epsilon xx? It is the longitudinal strain in the x direction. OK, so what is this going to be? We just have to look at this over here. It's going to be a11 times d sigma xx plus a12 times d sigma yy. Fair enough. And then let's keep going. Let's do yy now. So d epsilon yy is going to be equal to a12 times d sigma xx plus a22 plus d sigma yy. And then lastly, the differential of the shear strain is going to be equal to A44 times D tau xy. Okie dokie. Now let me just combine this all into one. So D u naught, which is the differential of the strain energy, is equal to sigma xx times A11 D sigma xx plus a12 d sigma yy plus um, sigma yy times a12 d sigma xx plus a22 d sigma yy and then lastly we have tau xy times a44 d tau xy okay pretty easy very easy. but here comes the tricky part so I want to show you this very carefully. So look at this. Um, what is the derivative? What is the derivative of sigma xx squared over 2? Well, the differential of this is just, it's just a regular derivative. It's just sigma xx d sigma xx. Right? And now look what we have here. 
sigma xx d sigma xx. So we can actually write this as a11 times the differential of sigma xx squared over 2. Why is this useful? You might have think that I lost my mind. But just keep, keep looking at what I'm doing here. Similarly, we have um, this right here. Sigma yy times the differential of sigma yy. So I'm going to write that as a22 times the differential of sigma yy squared over 2. Similarly here, I'm going to write this as a44 times the differential of tau xy squared over 2. But we have one left over here, right? And the one that's left is, um, well, what do we have here? We have a11. Let me do it in a different color. We have a11 d sigma yy sigma xx. I'll write it over here. We, we have what's left? We have a12, sorry, a12 sigma xx d sigma yy. And then we have a12 a12 sigma yy d sigma xx. Right, that, that's what's left. And we can't, we can't really fit it into this nice form there. We're going to have to think of something clever here. And if you keep thinking for a bit, you'll notice that this is exactly equal to a12 times the differential of sigma xx sigma yy. Right? Because when you take the differential of this product, you have to use the product rule. And you get exactly this guy, right? Take the derivative of one, keep the other, plus the derivative of the other, and keep the original. So, insert this into there, and what do we get? Let me rewrite this guy. We get d u naught is equal to a11 d sigma xx squared over 2 plus a22 d d sigma yy squared over 2 plus a44 d tau xy squared over 2. And now the last one here is a12 times d sigma xx sigma yy. And why have I done this? Well, remember, the question asks for the strain energy density function, not the differential of this. So the whole reason why we're looking for this shortcut to get the differential is because now we can integrate the whole thing. And so the answer because the integral of a differential is just itself. So the answer is simply, we get rid of this differential, and we're good to go. So it's just sigma x squared over 2 plus a22 sigma y, y squared over 2 plus a44 tau xy squared over 2 plus a12 sigma xx sigma yy. And that's the answer. That's the strain energy. That's how much strain energy is stored upon elongation okay and I encourage you if you want some more practice give it a go with this one and try to see if you can find these differentials so you can integrate that's a good skill to have okay